All right, guys, we're back again for yet another Bleach Brave Souls video, and we are going to be talking about Limit Break Request and what are going to be the best characters to use for the upcoming Limit Break Request because we already had it announced the moment we got info about the upcoming new characters, and it's dropping super early. Rather than having to wait until the 8th of every month, it's going to be directly on March 1st, which is kind of interesting. At the very least, you can get yourself 50 orbs and 500 KTP. Good time because I plan to start saving my TP now. I'm going to be max sending True Shikai Ichigo in the month of April. Going to be getting my next move source and yeah, pretty much a good time to start saving them. So uh, yeah, with that being said and done, let's get started. So let's go over the rules real quick. This probably is going to be even worse than last month's limit break request, but we have yet to see until it does drop and see how it is because last month, in case you guys did not know, they made it tougher on purpose for when it came to using slot three characters and for when you know you want to use characters that don't even meet the specific rules because I tried using Killgate in slot three. He was not effective at all despite having no rules. In slot 2, I also tried Yuha, despite, you know, at least having killer effect. Guess what? He was also not effective. So I pretty much was forced to follow the rules and to pretty much go with what I could go with. So yeah, let's see how this will end up being in terms of the difficulty. But so far, I do not like how they're structuring limit break requests now because it's going through the process of including artificial difficulty. Like, you need to have that said character, otherwise you are going to struggle. So let's just hope that isn't the case. Anywho, slot one, you're pretty much required to bring a speed character. And the rules here are going to be melee damage times two, killer effect times five, the status element puddles are poison, and the enemies are power hollow. And guess who is going to be meeting that requirement already? It's going to be none other than Sangdu, which is going to be dropping on the 29th. Slot 2, power attribute damage times 2, and killer effect of times 5. The status element puddles this time around are going to be freeze, and the enemies are Technic Aronkars. This is going to be boosting Parasol Rukia, and I'm glad that they have actually acknowledged that her SA2 is a melee attack, so they didn't even bother adding in a melee damage or range damage multiplier, which is good. So it means that Rukia will be able to do unconditional damage, nothing is going to be nerfed, and she's going to be perfect. And then slot 3, no rules, but that being said, the enemies are going to be Technique Soul Reapers. And that's all you guys really need to know. So let's just go over the best characters to use for slot one. For slot one, we have none other than Sangdu, who is going to be the best character to use for slot one. He is, in my opinion, tied with Retsu among being one of the best speed characters in the game. Although I kind of want to favor Retsu a bit more with the utility she brings to the table. But this character is no slouch. Coming with the very first ever spiritual pressure boost of 40% as a soul trait really does give a lot of value for this character. And I'm going to be making a should you summon before you summon before you skip video going into more detail about the character because I think this guy is worth summoning for just not on the main banner because the main banner is atrocious. It's bad. God awful. I don't recommend you guys to do 25 steps on that. That being said, he's a speed hollow killer. So already he's meeting the requirement of, you know, having the rules active, and he's going to be a melee character. His kit is basically the same as Unohana, just that he doesn't plant the trap. And even then, look at what he comes with. Like, he's a gauge character and is a lot better than Ichibei. Like, he has Frenzy plus 2, 80% SP boost. With a Soul Trait, he's got 120% SP boost. And on top of it all, even has increased status summon chance against power attribute enemies, Berserker of 50%, Damage to frozen enemies of 40% with Marauder, and then has the Gauge Rampage, just like Ichibei. We'll be able to fill up the Gauge mechanic the more enemies you kill, not just by attacking. And then once you activate the Gauge, you get an additional Frenzy plus one. So he gains Frenzy plus three, and also gains additional Flash Steps. So he'll have three Flash Steps by the time you get that... Wait, no, not even three, four Flash Steps, because this is Sprinter plus two. So yeah, same amount of Flash Steps as White, and then you get an additional cooldown reduction bonus thanks to this gauge effect skill. And when you start the quest, you'll have a 70% start gauge effect, 
which is awesome. So yeah, in my opinion, this is definitely the best gauge character that we have in the game and is pretty much going to be the best unit to use for slot one. Now, let's say you guys plan to skip the banner. You guys do not happen to get Sang Du or don't plan to get him. Who are the best alternatives? Well, if we go ahead and look at the list of melee holo killers that we have for speed, Senju Maru is actually going to be a really good alternative to use. That being said, she will not be able to inflict status summons, but I think that her DPS is good enough to the point that you'll be able to kill because she has Frenzy plus two with 100% pure damage, but that's not all, that's not all. She also comes with 50% Berserker has the same kit as Tensa Zengetsu, and also has Spurner Plus 2. So this character should be very effective, which is going to be really good. And her Soul Bomb shouldn't even be too bad, right? Because she has this team part increased speed attribute character special move damage of 30%, and of course, devastation of 60%. So her Soul Bomb will be okay. Just no status elements, but like, I think that this is gonna be one of the better characters to use if you do not happen to get Song Du. And sadly, that's it for melee holo killers. I do not recommend anyone else on the list whatsoever. Now, what about overall speed melee characters? Who can we use? <laughs> yeah, there, there you guys go, there you guys go. Here is your easiest pick, Yachiru Urahana. Now, she's not going to have killer, meaning that she is going to struggle a bit, but don't forget, lads, this character has Rampage. Kill 50 enemies, you get 100% damage to all of your attacks and you're inflicting status ailments non-stop. She even has the 80% SP boost. She even is a fast queen at that. Like, you do not want to joke around with this character at all. Like, she even has extra cooldown reductions to help ease your way with being able to activate the SA3 faster and you also get your SA1 and SA2 fast as well, so. Pretty much your only other alternative to use if you do not have Senjumaru and Sangdu. And that's pretty much about it. I do not recommend anyone else on the list. You can make a use out of Uryu and Tensa Zengetsu because they'll have the melee damage. But keep in mind, they don't have any of the extra stuff that uh, Retsu will have here. So uh, pretty much only use those characters as your last resort. And... That's it. There's no one else I can pretty much recommend on the speed list. We can even go over the range solo killers that we have on the list, but I don't think we have one, right? Oh, that's right. I forgot we have this Ulkior. Ulkior will be okay here. Just that, keep in mind, uh, his DPS is nowhere near as good as the other characters that I have mentioned before, and will probably be the last character you'll ever use if you do not have any of the other characters, but he should be still good. He has Frenzy plus one unfortunately with only 40 percent berserker 80 percent sp boost and to back it up increased speed attribute a ronker damage the status element affected enemies of 40 percent no increased status element chance but his soul bomb is still going to be remarkably good because he's got like bombardment with devastation weakening that's just about it but like in terms of dps he's not going to be it and that's it uh there's no one else to recommend in terms of ranged holo killers Slot 2 and 3 is going to require the usage of using power characters. That being said, we already have the best character to use for Slot 2, and that is going to be Parasol Rukia. This character is basically what I would describe as a mini Kilge because she does have the Rampage skill. She does get, you know, cooldowns back when moving in between the quest areas. Only difference is that the SA2 will take a bit longer to pretty much get back. Not when moving in between maps, it's gonna be all right. It's just that she has a 16 second cooldown because it is a healing strong attack. If she had barriers or boost, then it would have been 20 seconds and she doesn't even have that. So yeah, that being said, she's gonna be the best character. She has like what, frenzy plus two, 80% SP boost. Uh, what else? Uh, full stamina damage boost of 20% with uh, what else? Damage to frozen enemies, I believe, yeah. 40% damage to frozen enemies with sharpshooter, healer. She can heal up herself and her teammates if you happen to take hits, and she's gonna be really good here. And thankfully, once again, um, there is no melee or ranged damage multiplier here, so Rukia is not gonna get screwed over with the SA2, thankfully. None of her attacks are gonna be screwed over. She'll be able to do her damage throughout 100% of the time through the quest, though. I recommend you guys use her. And then, uh, who do we have for our Ronker killers for power? Oh god, there's nobody here? Uh, keep in mind, I have the list filtered for both melee and ranged, and 
Just Rukia is the only good one. That is terrible. Absolutely abysmal. This is why they should not have buffed power. Oh my god, that is just bad. Terrible. I do not recommend even using uh, Ten Year Later Rukia, Fifth Annie Ichigo. Safi Miyuri is going to suck here. And this uh, Yumi Chika as well. Like, there's no good characters, sadly. That being said, thankfully, because you're not restricted to using power characters, you guys can choose as a last resort to use characters outside of the power attribute. So who do we have that can work? Keep in mind, you can use melee and ranged characters. Okay, uh, um, oh, okay. Here's your perfect um, alternative, Kilge. Kilge's OP, hopefully he should be good to go. Even with one rule active, he'll at least have the Oronker killer effect. There is no melee uh, range damage multiplier. It's just for the attribute, and that's probably what's going to hurt this character for when it comes to going through the quest in the long run. But like, if you guys do not have Rukia, this is a good character to use, and I'm going to be using Kilge. For those of you guys that still do not know, this character does what Parasol Rukia does, but even better because he has the better kit. A 3k link beam, 916 to homing vortex, full screen, uh, 1200 radius, and it's just going to be a much faster character at that as well. But again, the rules are going to determine the performance of this character. Oh, and thankfully, uh, he is immune to freeze here, so uh, you don't even have to worry about that for when it comes to the freeze puddles, just like Rukia. And that's the only exceptionally good alternative for you guys to use. Uh, besides that, this uh, Mind Hueco Mundo Aizen should be... White an effective character, but not as good as Kilge because he doesn't have the Rampage. But that being said, he does have 80% SP boost with 40% uh, uh, full stamina only, strong attack damage, and an extra full stam 20. What else? Yeah, that's pretty much about it. He's mainly going to be doing most of the damage via the full stam, 80% SP boost, no increased status element chance. Uh, yeah, he's just going to be pretty decent to use. But that's pretty much it. He's got the same kit as Safi Tosh. He's got a beam, lunge, and then full screen. Conquered Ichigo should be okay here, but again, um, no status elements and is pretty much going to be worse than Senjumo in this kind of case in particular. Don't recommend 7th Anniversary Ichigo. Aizen is going to slow you down. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it, lads. I don't recommend any other characters. Uh, not even this Yoruichi, I have to be honest. So yeah, if you guys have Kilge, use him. And that's it for slot 2. And now for slot three, it's going to require the usage out of power soul reaper killers. But who the hell do we have that? Because I do not remember the last time we got a power soul reaper killer. Bro, really? Safui, Kenny, and Kisuke. The game is telling you to use these characters. Huh. Uh, look, I have to be 100% realistic with you guys. Uh, they'll still work, don't get me wrong, especially Kisuke because he does have the 80% SP boost, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as effective. So in any case, because there are no rules, I recommend the usage of any Maxion Sended unit that you have in this kind of case. Like, you guys can use Yama, for example. A matter of fact, if you guys have Parasol Rukia for slot 2 and have Yama Maxion Sended, you guys can actually get away with using him in slot 3 and he will still be able to get away with getting all of his cooldown reductions back when moving in between the quest areas and just be able to spam the essays in just about every single map. The only bad thing about this character is that he's very inconsistent with getting the 80% SP boost. It's not even fun. Like, the DPS is still there. Like, Frenzy plus one with 40% Berserker, 80% SP boost, and damage to burning and weakened enemies of 40%. Like, it's good just that again no increased status element chance which is pretty much going to hurt this character for when it comes to going through limit break request in the long run but if you guys have him action sended he's going to be a very good option and uh eighth any ichigo should be okay still he does have the poise break he was pretty much good in the last months of limit break request however i did feel like he was really slow for when it came to killing off the enemy mob so again if you guys have yama action sended i recommend using him and then outside of that uh look if it turns out to be like the limit break requests that we had prior to january's where uh there were no increased defense on the enemy mobs you guys can pretty much use anyone but the speed character for slot three meaning that you guys will have access to the likes of yuha baha 
and he'll be a very amazing character to use. He's the Limit Break Request King for a reason, and I'm going to attempt using him in slot three and see if he'll still work. Like, uh, he's just gonna be better. He does gain extra soul bombs by killing 80 enemies. He's very fast, speedy, has the 80% SP boost with Frenzy plus two, 40% Berserker, which then pretty much you get extra damage with him by just killing enemy mobs. Like, yeah, this character is just going to be stupidly strong. Let's just hope that you guys can actually use him in slot three and you can get away with using him. And yeah, besides that, again, Killgate can be used in slot three. If we don't have that kind of problem, you can use anyone. Even this Ruruka right here, even without killer, will prove to be very effective. But that's only if, you know, you don't need to use power characters. So there's that. And then, uh, who else? Of course, Parasol Rukia once again, but use her in slot 2. Like, she has the rules. You have no excuse to not run her in slot 2 if you guys happen to own the character in this case. Noel can be decent. Nini can be decent. Again, Kilgay's gonna work. Once again, like I stated, White can work. You have a good amount of plethora of characters to use in that kind of case that isn't a speed character. So, there's that. And, uh, yeah. Those are the best characters that I can pretty much recommend you guys to use for this round of Limit Break Request for the upcoming month of March. And this is the team that I'm going to be using for this upcoming month of Limit Break Request. I'm going to be using Yichiru Unahana in slot 1, Kilgate in slot 2, and Yuha Baha in slot 3. Yichiru because I do not have Sangdu. If I get him within the discount multis that I do, then I'm pretty much going to be using him in slot 1. Uh, Killgate, I don't have Parasol Rukia, so he's gonna be my better alternative character to use. And Yuha, I'm only gonna be using him if there are no problems in slot 3. But should there be problems in slot 3 where you need to run characters with typing advantage, then I'm just going to replace Yuha with my Maxion Send Yamamoto, and I should be good to go. And if we want to talk about accessories and links, pretty much just go with the usual hybrid recharge, strong attack damage, or full stamina damage boost build. But that being said, I recommend you guys not to use the stickers this time around and use the badge or basically any of the 20% strong attack damage accessories because I found that the actual strong attack damage multiplier accessories were way more effective than the killer stickers. I was apparently wrong all this time and I'm glad that um, my eyes were open to some friends and fans about it, so, uh, yeah, shoutouts to the people in the comment section, like always, so, uh, yeah, I do read them sometimes, like, <laughs> it may not look like it, but I'm keeping an eye out, and, uh, yeah, even though the last month of Limit Break Request, uh, was pretty much the same, like, I didn't improve my record by a bit, I was actually able to get around to getting a bit further into the stage that I once left off, so pretty much, this is what you would want to go for, and then the links. If you guys can, I recommend 14% links with 16% uh, strong attack damage or full stam, never the 10% cooldown reductions, unless the character in base has built in 14% cooldown reduction, like kill game this kind of case. So, uh, yeah, Senkama Chads are pretty good. Just don't go for a uh, full 10% recharge links with strong attack damage. Otherwise, it is going to hinder the run unless you have characters that can support cooldown reductions like Kilgay, Parasol Rukia, and you guys can pretty much get away with doing so. But um, yeah, that's just basically about it. Let me know if this video has actually helped you guys formulate a team to build for this upcoming Limit Break request. And uh, yeah, we'll just see how things will go about it from there. And uh, yeah. This month is probably gonna suck. I don't like the fact that they buffed power once again when it's in such a dead state. I literally had to make a goddamn meme out of this after seeing Toshiro being treated as a NAD character. God damn it. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that like button, share this video with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already, and hit the bell notification so that way you guys are up to date with my most recent videos. This has been your boy, The Death Smasher, and I hope to see you guys all in the next one. So have a wonderful day, lads. Peace out. Bye. Sayonara. Ciao, ciao. No.